We're here today on RealAirCulture.com. We're with Elaine Fraze. She is uh, her company is Seeds of Encouragement. She does. She's a farm family business consultant, uh, focusing in on succession. Welcome today, Elaine. Thanks, John. Okay, Elaine, let's talk about uh, family uh, farm succession, and, and I guess focusing on the area of when is the right time to start having the discussion about succession on your family farm. Well, first of all, I think we should define what succession means to me. And for me, it's the transfer of labor, management, and ownership. And those transitions, John, come in different stages. And typically, labor comes first because younger backs are really appreciated for all the grant jobs. But what I find as a family coach is that I'll get young farmers who've already put in 12, 14 years of sweat equity, and they're like age 32 now. And they're saying, Elaine, I don't own anything. And uh, that's typically true with fathers and mothers who are successors and founding parents who don't want to let go of ownership. And then the management transition can be a gradual thing or it depends on what kind of manager you have. If you have a parent who's a boss and not a team player or if you have a parent who's more open to an open management style and is willing to you know, set up a timeline for your learning plan for training for you know, all the myriad of decisions that you make in a farm and a ranch business. So there's different pieces. So the question, when is the time, Sean, is when you're passionate to be part of the farm. And for some people, that could be in their mid-20s. I've had clients as young as 24 who are being groomed to be the next CEO of the company. And these are this is a multi-million dollar farm operation we're talking about. And then today, between our appointment for this interview, I got a call this morning from a woman whose father is 96 and still holds all the gold. Mm. And and she says, we have a little bit of a problem here. And I go, well, I would think so. A problem a long if, time ago. <laughs> yeah. And and so so and when is the time? My my definition is the time is whether, when you're 32, 42, 52, and 62, 72, and 82. And I say that flippantly because I get a lot of calls from the young farmers in age 32, 42 from the farmers who are in their 40s because from a coaching perspective the way I was trained in the Hudson Institute is by the time you're 40 you need to have the ability to take charge and you should be owning things and I and we've even started ownership with our son now in his early 20s and he's still in ag school so it's a very value driven principle as to when the right time is but the important thing I think is that you start the conversation and you stay in the conversation so 62-year-olds will call me and say, well, you know, I'm getting bugged at the coffee shop about my brand envelope, and everyone expects farmers to retire at age 65. And my mantra is farmers never retire. And they love me when I say that. But then they don't like the next part because the next part is they don't retire. They just need to reinvent their role, i.e., when are they going to become the hired man again and, and complete the cycle? So it, John, I, every family is different. Yeah. Well, I guess, and I guess one of the main questions is, is let's just say that uh, there is a there's a son on the farm or a son or daughter on the farm, and say they are that age thirty two or thirty or thirty five, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they and they do want that ownership role. How, how mm-hmm. do you from a, from the from the kids or I guess the kid the young person the younger person's perspective how do you start that conversation well first of all is is it has to be safe and respectful and um, throwing out threats and ultimatums is not going to help your cause and withholding the grandchildren is not going to help your cause either I actually had a case where a young farmer's wife uh, the irate daughter-in-law in this case was not allowing the grandparents to see the grandkids because she didn't like the way the succession planning conversations weren't happening at all. So the, the first point is is you have to want to stay in the conversation, but you need to have it in a place that's going to be safe and respectful. And for some families, they don't have the communication skills to do that on their own, and that's why I'll never be out of work because my role is to be an outside neutral facilitator. I'm trained in conflict resolution and coaching, and coaching is about discovering, building new scenarios and timelines and action plans for the family. Because the other thing that happens, Sean, is you get caught up 
in the business of farming, but you're not spending time on the business, which is the strategic planning around succession planning. And it's not just the succession plan because the other layered plans and then are what I call the lifestyle plan, i.e., where are the parents going to live if they move off the, lot, the main yard? Where is their other 50% of their income stream going to come if only 50% is coming from the farm? And thirdly, how are they going to compensate for the farming kid, son or daughter, farm equity versus being fair and what fairness looks like to them in terms of their estate plan for their non-business heirs. So there's there's like 10 vital plans and I have a checklist that I give to my clients and say, this is why you're not doing anything because you're just so overwhelmed because you know there's so much more to do than just a basic transfer of the business. It's all interlocked. Mm -hmm. And so my foundation is to start with discussing what I call the undiscussables, the bull in the middle of the room identifying what those key challenges are and then just working at each of those challenges one by one and saying, okay, we have an issue here about moving, about the residents. And I have a case right now where um, the farm father really is very stubborn and proud and loves to be where he is and does not want to move. And the young son in his early 30s with young babies on the way is saying, I want to be in the main yard because that's where the cattle are, that's where the action is and I want to be able to see my kids. Mm -hmm. And so we haven't had the conversation yet, but then I have other clients, Sean, who look at it differently and say, okay, we'll stay on the main yard, but my son and his two kids are very happy to be 20 minutes away at a beautiful residence somewhere else, and they commute, and that's fine. So every family values different things, but how do I know, Sean, what's in your head? I don't, I can't read your mind. So I need to have a conversation about your expectations and your intent. And that's what families need to do is have those conversations first before they go out spending thousands. I had one family spent, I won't give you the direct number, but let's let's call it seven, di or not seven, but five digits on, on a succession plan, which is going to be on the shelf because the consultant didn't get clear right from the get-go that the two brothers involved in this ranch were not going to be able to farm together, and there's never any intention about being a company together. 